Hello, in this and the next series of tutorials, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of building a layout. Particularly in this one, I'm going to talk about creating track objects, since this is the foundation of any railroad. I will start with a clean layout. You can click on New to clear anything you may have done previously, and go to Edit Mode if not already there. If you need a refresher on the edit mode, see the previous tutorial on this topic. Although adding tracks can be done from the object browser, the easiest way to do this is from the switchboard. Before doing so, I make sure the switchboard is in track edit mode from here, or from the context menu by right-clicking the switchboard. Say I want to add a track object to this cell. I right click on the cell and the track types available for placement will be shown here. I'm going to choose a simple straight track. Now that the track occupies the cell, notice that the context menu options have changed. I can now replace the existing track with a different type, rotate the track left, right, or delete it altogether. I'm going to rotate the track twice to the right to get it horizontal. And then I'll lay another one right next to it in the same way. Now that took a lot of clicks and this is where shortcuts can come in handy. Most context menu options in railroad automation will have shortcut key associations. And in this case, they all do. So a much faster way to lay tracks is to use them avoiding context menus altogether. Just hover the mouse over the desired cell and click on the shortcut key. I'm going to continue to lay down more horizontal tracks using this method. Much faster. Now to complete a simple oval track. Looking at the object browser, you'll see all the tracks I've created under the tracks root node. Let's say now that I wanted to add a siding. I'll change this track to a turnout by selecting the track and changing its type to turnout left. Rotate it. For the next one, I'll do this through shortcuts. If you forget them, you can always right-click and view them through the context menu. Then connect the ends. Notice that some track types, like this curved track, have more than one variant. For example, you can toggle between a sharp or mild curve by pressing the same shortcut again. Next, I'll add a spur right here. Now that I have a basic track structure that I'm happy with, the next thing is to configure my tracks. Looking at the properties of the selected track, we got name. You could optionally give your track a more descriptive name especially if you plan on accessing it through scripting. Location. You could move a track on the switchboard by changing these column row values, but it's probably simpler to do this with the arrow keys like this. The column row location that the mouse is hovering over is shown right here. For the rest of the properties, you can look for their description down here in the property grids field description area. So that's the properties of a simple stateless track. If I select a turnout, you'll see a few more additional properties. Again, look at the description for these down here. 
The final track configuration is the LocoNet packet generation. This is specific to turnout track types. These are LocoNet messages that Railroad Automation puts on the LocoNet network when a virtual turnout is switched so that the physical turnout mirrors its action. This configuration is done from the object browser. Expand the turnout and right click on the state to be configured. From here you can add packets to be sent when the specified state is activated. I'll add one set switch packet for each state. This is the most common type for turnouts. Then click on each packet to configure it. One will send a closed message and the other a thrown message on the same switch address. You're not limited to one packet or one type of packet per state. For example, in a double slip scenario, you have two points per state, so you would need to add two packets per each state. To verify the proper behavior of your switches, you can test transmit your packets either from here, for single packets, or here, for state packets, without having to go to operation mode. Aside from inspecting the physical layout for proper turnout operation, the LocoNet packets log can be used to examine the traffic generated. So that about covers the basics on tracks. There's more to come in this series, so stay tuned and thank you for listening.